This is the robotic actuator that I have designed and am using in my quadruped robot. The robot has 12 of these equal motors, three for each leg. This actuator is completely designed from scratch by me to be 3D printed, making it much cheaper than commercial robotic actuators. In this video I am going to show you the complete assembly of this robotic actuator. Let's go there. Here we have all the elements that make up the robotic actuator. The largest piece is the outer casing where you can see that I have already included the bearing for the output shaft. Internally, you can see the teeth of the planetary ring gear. It has several windows to cool the actuator as well as possible. This is the stator. It is a stator that is completely wound by me, and it has taken me a long time to wind each phase so that it has the highest possible energy density. It is the only metallic part of the entire actuator. This is the fan. It is a fan from the graphics card and it rotates more or less fast according to a temperature sensor that is physically touching the stator coils. This is the electronics that controls everything. Here you can see the microcontroller, power driver, the components to measure the motor current and other communications. The small connector is used for programming and behind you can see the magnetic encoder. The white connectors are for CAN communication and the yellow connectors are for power. These are planetary gears. There are three of them that are assembled with this piece that is the output shaft. Putting the planetary gears on the steel shaft you can see that it rotates freely, even without bearing. This is the rotor with the bearing also already mounted. Here you can see that I have integrated a Halbach matrix array with 42 large magnets and 42 small magnets. Look how it spins pretty free. This is the diametrically magnetized magnet for the magnetic encoder and is entered here. This piece is the rear part that serves to close the robotic actuator. These three small pieces hold the PCB to the actuator body. And that's it, here we have all the pieces that make up the robotic actuator. The sensor I use to measure temperature is a thermistor, similar to the one used in 3D printers. The thermistor touches directly with the coils of the motor, in this way to know the temperature of the motor. I introduce the cables through some ducts in the outer casing to be able to take them to the PCB. As the actuator is printed in PLA, it cannot reach a temperature higher than 50 degrees Celsius because it can melt. That is why I have programmed that if the temperature reaches the limit of 50 degrees Celsius, the actuator is automatically disabled. The stator has been wound using the maximum amount of copper possible. 0.4 square millimeter thread has been used and is wound 46 times in each groove. I have used a star termination connection. 
I introduce the cables of each phase through the conduits of the outer casing to be able to take them to the PCB, just like I did with the temperature sensor. As you can see, I use the space inside the stator for the planetary gears, making the robotic actuator as compact and small as possible. Since it is going to be used in a quadruped robot, it is important to also make the actuator light. Specifically, it weighs 435 grams. The output shaft has three steel pins for the planetary gears. The planetary gear makes a 4 colon 1 reduction in order to generate more torque, necessary to be able to move the weight of the entire quadruped robot. Place the three planetary gears and check that everything moves correctly. Grease everything so that it moves more fluidly. Use these parts with the bearing to fix both the stator in the housing and the complete planetary gear system. The actuator has very tight tolerances for both 3D printing and assembly. I tried several 3D printing materials such as PETG, nylon or polycarbonate, but all of them are less rigid than PLA. That is why I have chosen this material as the definitive one. It is probable that in the future I will try ASA if I need to hold more temperature. But at the moment the actuators are working without mishaps in the quadruped robot. Screw it from behind with 6 screws and from the front with 3 screws to keep everything fixed. The magnet is inserted into the rear of the rotor. This magnet, along with the magnetic encoder, tells me how many turns the rotor turns. 
The rotor does not have an external steel casing like conventional BLDC motors, which results in lower torque output. That is why I had to introduce the Halbach magnet array mounting 42 large magnets and 42 small magnets. By doing this, I have managed to decrease the lack of torque from not having a steel outer ring. I put a little more grease on the gear. I place the entire rotor in its position, making sure that everything is correctly assembled and does not rub the stator with the rotor. There is only one millimeter between these two parts. The front bearing is put on and I fix the rotor with a small piece. The fan is soldered on these pads that I indicate. One cable is for power, another is for GND and the other is used to control the revolutions per minute of the fan. The three small supports are mounted on the PCB to be able to integrate it inside the actuator. I also use these brackets to screw the fan inside later. Now it's time to assemble the PCB inside the actuator. As you can see, the programming, communications and power connectors can be used from outside. Solder the two wires from the temperature sensor to the PCB.
the three phase wires from the stator are soldered to the PCB. The fan is mounted with its three screws and it is verified that it rotates freely. Finally, the entire actuator is closed with the rear part. This piece also has openings for the fan to take clean air. This has been all the assembly of the actuator that I am using to use it in the quadruped robot. At the moment I have the 12 actuators mounted and they are being tested simultaneously. I hope you liked it, in future videos I will show you more advances of the quadruped robot. Thanks for watching.